Welcome to Mechanic to Millionaire podcast number three. Does your life need a tune-up? Or does it need a complete overhaul? A few years ago, Dave MacArthur was a mechanic. And now he's a millionaire. Join us twice a week on the Mechanic to Millionaire podcast, where Dave teaches the techniques he used for success in a down-to-earth, practical way you can implement into your own life. And now, Dave MacArthur. Well, good Monday morning, everyone. Welcome to the Mechanic to Millionaire podcast. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening in. Couldn't have this show without you. Thank you so much. Um, You know what? (laughs) I got to share with you. If this show sounds extra good, there's a specific reason. I had done the show already once. (laughs) What do I mean by that? I there's a recording there's a recording equipment, right? And in order for me to hear myself through the headphones, I have to click the record button. And then to actually start recording, I have to hit the record button again. Well, I put everything together and got it ready to upload to Mr. O'Neill. He went into the folder to grab the audio and and realized there was no audio in there after completely doing the show. So this is my second time. So I've had a practice run and I shouldn't have said that because what if it's not good? Then you're going to think, Oh my goodness, he did it twice and it (laughs) wasn't even good. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, you live and learn. That's a rookie mistake. We're only on podcast number three. So how funny, right? I hope you feel for me. Well, okay, so Monday morning, I, I wanted to say something. There were some thoughts on my mind this morning about uh, Mondays. And if you're listening to it on the day this was loaded up to the went to the podcast site, it's Monday, right? You may be listening to it on Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever. But if it's Monday and you're listening to this, some people don't like Mondays. I love Mondays. And there might be you know, a very valid reason for why some people don't like Mondays. Sometimes life acts on us rather than us acting on life, right? And so we find ourselves in circumstances and situations where that life has put us there and we're going to a job that we're not fulfilled with, where we we don't like it. And so there's valid reasons for not liking Monday because you're going to do something that you don't like in order to fulfill the responsibilities you have financially. And that's not a good place to be. So Mondays could be a terrible day. But I want to share with you something that I learned in a book that I read. I don't even remember which one. But uh, it was about outgrowing your position, being bigger than the position that you're in. There's a law that goes with that. And right now I'm kind of giving you the cart in front of the horse because it's the laws that we want to learn that teach us how to act and, and then make those habitual. But... I'm putting the cart in front of the horse right now because you can live laws and do them ignorantly, but as long as you're being obedient to them, whether you know you are or not, you'll still reap the benefits. And one of the things that you can start thinking about and processing and and implementing is the, the law of excellence or outgrowing your current position. So if you're in a place that you don't like... The saying is, uh, a lot of personal development coaches and life coaches will say, uh, how you do anything is how you do everything. And so you want to strive for a level of excellence. Well, there's a law behind that, and we'll get into those uh, you know, throughout the, the show and the upcoming weeks and months. But um, living your life and out, outgrowing your current position, and how do you do that? Well, it's committing to excellence, going above and beyond the call of duty and whatever is expected of you. Most people will go through that kind of job where they're in this place in life that they don't particularly like, but they're forced into it, and they'll just do whatever it takes to get by. And some bosses, you know, you may not even have to do that because they're very lenient, but that's, you know, that's... That's not a good place. You want people who expect more out of you, like a great coach will expect more out of their players. So you've got to reach deep and get into your, you know, get into that that place where you can create a motivation within yourself, be be um, a self motivator. Why? Because you'll be tapping into a law, and that law is is it will lift you up and pull you out of that circumstance. It will do it, but there's some of the things you've got to align yourself with and some other things you've got to be aware of and and working towards, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that today in this call, but or on this this show. So uh, just 
Excellent. I have this, this, uh, my wife gave me this rock. It's a granite rock and it has inscribed on it a quote from Vince Lombardi. And it says the quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to their commitment to excellence. So that's the ending result. That's the cart in front of the horse. That's the ending result of understanding how to do things in a certain way. And again, we're going to get there, but you can kind of cheat the time and, and, and knowing, uh, how these things work and govern your lives by just actually doing them. So go into your job, be excellent. Have people all of a sudden say, what's going on with you? Why are you so, why are you doing such a great job? I mean, and if they start talking bad about the job and the, and the boss, don't do it. Don't, don't get sucked into that. Just be excellent, excellent at everything you do, whether it's, you know, cleaning something or having to take the trash out. You know, I remember a friend of mine, uh, a really good friend of mine, Lenny, uh, a mentor said, you know, he met a, a guy that owned a restaurant. He said, let me come here and show, come here and let me show you something. He showed him the garbage outside, like the dump. It was clean all around it. They cleaned it. They made sure it was shiny. And I mean, this is the dumpster we're talking about. And he says, if I know that they're doing that really well, then how do you think everything else is going to be? And everything else is going to be at this level of excellence. And if you like the job that you're at, you're just not in the position you want to be. This is one of the laws you can live without understanding the law itself. So, I, you know, just check in with yourself. Do a little personal inventory right now. How do I feel about Monday today? What am I thinking? How am I feeling? And change that and shift it and become excellent at everything you do. And you'll outgrow your position, I promise you. Uh, the other thing I want to remind before I jump into uh, the Master Key System is your mastermind group. You should, and maybe this is the first call you're listening to. If so, then you might want to go back and listen to the intro call where I talk about the mastermind group and getting three to five people. I would say max seven people. Three to five is a good number. And and you want a group of people that you can plug into the show, make sure that they're listening and they're downloading the shows, and then you can mastermind uh, uh, with each other based on the things that you're wanting to accomplish personally and you get ideas and you become familiar and you get different input and different perspectives and that's a mastermind group and you'll get a lot more it, it be from the group than you would ever get on your own trying to analyze and figure things out on your own you're just opened up to a much bigger paradigm and so you get greater input you get greater ideas and you can you can give out some of your ideas and they'll respond back to you so you can bounce uh, you know ideas back and forth off of each other so a mastermind group is critical and so you should uh, already have you know at least put down names maybe you haven't called them or invited them yet but don't delay that get started with that and then what i want you to do is communicate with that mastermind group on a weekly basis and you should stay in contact throughout the week maybe through texting is very simple you can have group text. There's apps for that. There's also freeconferencecalling.com. I like that one. I've had my own number for like eight years. It's free and it allows people to call into a number and you're all in there together. You could record the calls. Um, it just gives you one phone number that everybody calls into. That's at freeconferencecalling.com. I really like that program. So. I want you to do that with your mastermind group and get it together and start thinking. And whoever you think about, if you haven't, there are people's names that will come into your mind immediately because they're wanting this in their life too. And now you're the catalyst. And so you're being prompted to call these people. So do that, all right? I, um, I challenge you to make sure you get a mastermind group together. And you're going to start working together and moving forward in your life. And you'll create some really great relationships doing that. So I want to go now into uh, the master key and finish off on some of these bullet points that I had, had outlined or highlighted in my book and, and talk about the last few outlines in the preface or the last few bullet points of what to expect, really setting the foundation. Like you might be thinking, let's just get into the laws. Let's start talking about it. Let's, well, this is part of that. You've got to build brick on brick. You've got to have the bigger perspective and the, and the, and the broader and, and solid foundation. And so this is part of that learning process and getting us, you know, to a place where we want to be. There's going to be lots of, you know, reiterating, lots of different um, saying the same thing in different ways because you've really got to, I, I want to connect with you on all levels and make sure that you're really getting something. And the things that I'm going to share with you, they're all important. I think uh, I don't like to, you know, just talk just to talk and, 
and come up with something to say. These are things that I've connected with and that have made a difference. And, and I believe we're all in, in one way the same and we all progress, but we're going to be different in what we connect with and what we resonate with and what life experiences you've had. But if we can fill in the little uh, nooks and crannies of, of things that we're missing, then all of a sudden it all starts coming together. So I want to, this bullet point, it's, if you're following along in your book, it's on page 14 and it's towards the bottom. It says, learn how to tackle the problems that creep into your life and eventually learn how to banish those problems altogether. So problems are like just what we talked about. You don't like the job you're going into. You're unfulfilled. Uh, you don't know how to get excited about it. You don't know why you should get excited, why you should excel rather than just be passive or mediocre. He said we can get rid of all of those once and for all. Knowledge is power, right? And so we need to learn these things and then apply them. Knowledge isn't powerful by itself. It's knowledge properly applied becomes powerful. And you're going to start getting the information and the knowledge that can transform your life and put you in control. So instead of life happening to you and putting you into situations, you're going to call the shots. And when you're calling the shots and you're doing it in a scientifically, you know, certain way, then it just works again and again and again. The little note that I put with that bullet point is the law of non-resistance. The law of non-resistance is an incredible law, and when I was introduced to it and started having it defined to me, and how does it play a role in my life, and how does that affect my attitude and my outlook, and, and how I process things, how I respond rather than react, because when people are standing around the cooler at work, or you're talking, and you, you, you know, you're, you, you have your own little groups that you talk with, and, and, and share different ideas and, and things that are bugging you or whatever, the people that you talk with, um, the law of non-resistance, when, when people get into those situations, they don't realize that they're conducting themselves in a certain way, in a certain method, in a certain pattern. And they don't realize that that is like the foundation of the creating of your circumstances and your situations. So the the law of non-resistance, the power of this definition of, of, of and defining how I look at life, how I hold myself, how I, you know, what my posture is, what do I talk about, what am I listening to when other people are talking, what am I allowing to receive from other people, and what am I blocking away? The law of non-resistance is that you pay... Uh, the, the note I made is make no agreements with those things which you don't want in your life. How many times do we agree with those groups we're hanging out with that we're talking around the you know the water cooler, uh, the drinking fountain, whatever? How many times are we in agreement by participating in and contributing to the conversation about things we don't like, about things that we don't want in our lives, about you know. I don't have enough money or I wish I had this or I wish the boss was more like this and, and, and you know, this is how he is and we complain and, and we contribute to those conversations. That's by in violation of the law of non-resistance. So what the law of non-resistance was for me, it was a definition of how I engage myself because that plays a direct role with the law of attraction, the law of vibration. And all of these things that contribute and make up my life and what's coming into my life, the people that are showing up in my life, the, the amount of money I make, the things I get to do with my spare time, the stresses or the non-stresses, all of these things work together symbiotically. They come together. And the law of non-resistance is a big one. It was a big one for me when I got the definition of it, that you don't want to give it any resistance, like, a, like water going downhill. It always gets downhill. But it doesn't sit there, and when it hits an obstacle, it doesn't fight that obstacle. Like, imagine a little trickle coming down uh, a mountain. It's just starting its own little path. So it's the beginning of a new um, pathway of water getting down. It doesn't sit there and fight with the rock, and if the rock doesn't move, it's not powerful enough. There's not enough water coming down. It's just a little trickle. It doesn't tr sit there and say, oh, I'm not going to go down any further until I move this rock. And there's no way that little trickle is going to move the rock. It's not powerful enough. What does the water do? It 
adheres to and is obedient to the law of non-resistance says, okay, I'll just go around that. I won't, it's like the rock's not there. Instead of trying to push the rock out of the way, instead of trying to fight it and resist it, it just goes right around it with ease. It just hums its way right down the hill going around obstacles. It pays them no mind. It pays them no attention. So how do we translate that into our own life and how we present ourselves? You don't give in to those conversations. You don't listen to them. You don't become a part of them. It's kind of awkward at first because you're so used to doing it. You're a part of the group and now you're going to be excluding yourself. And, and it's an awkward situation to be in when you're moving your place from point A to point B when you're moving yourself. So you just don't give it any attention. If the boss is a jerk, you don't give it any attention because that's the thing you don't want. You don't want to have a boss that's a jerk, right? Somebody that's always, you know, uh, looking at all the things you're not supposed to be doing rather than, you know, uh, acknowledging you for the things that you are doing. So you don't, even with your thoughts, you don't even go there in your head, let alone speaking about it with others and talking about it and reinforcing it. So in your mind, the law of non-resistance is it's like water on a duck's back. It just rolls off. So some of the other, pay them no attention. Mentally do not allow them to dominate your thinking. There's a few things that do demand our attention that we don't want. Like we need to pay bills and maybe you don't have enough money or maybe you got to scrape up some money somehow to pay that bill. But once you physically have done everything you can do, you want to start being obedient to the law of non-resistance to get out of that situation. So once you've done everything you can physically do, you don't think about it anymore. So if the boss is being a jerk at work, well, you can't like ignore that and just be like whistling and looking off. You got to pay attention to what he's saying, right? Otherwise you might get fired. But once you're there, you immediately shift yourself into another place where you're thinking about something else that you want. And I'll, I'll touch a little bit on that, but I'm not going to go too deep into that. That will play out as the weeks progress here. So I want you to start clearing out some land. I want you to start cleaning off your plate and creating some free space with your mind and what you're thinking about and what you're talking about, what you're articulating with people. So think about all the times that you're not obeying the law of non-resistance, all the times you're thinking about and talking about the things you don't want. Start to become aware of that. Do like this little inventory. Now, the vast amount of attention that we give is to things that are of no real consequence. We just continue to play them out in our mind. We continue to talk about them. We string it out. We make it prolonged. And we don't need to. So once you've done everything you can physically with you know, paying the bills or whatever it is, then, uh, then focus on what it is, uh, the ideas and the ideals that you like, which I'll talk about in a sec, to replace that with. Uh, so, like, if you're if you're driving a car that you don't like, it always has trouble. Don't spend time thinking all day about all the troubles of that car and and how it frustrates you, and you wish you could be doing something, you know, driving a a better car because you're thinking mostly about how your car isn't. Those kinds of things you don't have to do at all. You could be uh, like, well, I, I don't want to get into what you do just yet. I want you to, I, I want, really want you to understand what it is that you're focusing on that you shouldn't be when you're not adhering to the law of non-resistance. And okay, so again, that is things that you uh, don't want happening in your life. A lot of them you could just eliminate. So imagine how much time you could eliminate from uh, things that by not thinking about and talking about the things that you don't want. Does it make sense? So I'm kind of struggling here a little bit, but I, I want to make sure that this is understood because it's such an important law. You're going to have a lot of free time. There's a lot of empty space if you eliminate all of that. If, if it's the carpet in your house and it doesn't look nice and and then you start playing, talking about, you start building that story up like, well, I don't want to have anybody come over because my, you know, the carpet doesn't look good. I need to have the person come and clean it and I don't have the money to have them come and clean it right now. And all of this stuff we start making up and, and we're resisting the things that we want or we're resisting that thing that's you know like a, well like I just said that we don't want so what would you do in place of that so if you can start eliminating that start becoming aware of what you're thinking about in those moments how can you what do you replace that with you want to start getting attached to the ideas that you fall in love with the things that you do want 
I was listening to uh, Bob Proctor. I went on YouTube and I just Googled some things and put in some searches and I came up with something that I really like listening to. I'm going to go back and listen to it. But he was talking about what idea have you really fallen in love with and, and allow that idea to use you. He says, uh, he, he often mentions Earl Nightingale and that a successful person is somebody who's progressively working towards the realization of a worthy ideal. So what are some things that you have fallen in love with that some ideas and some ideals of how you think your life should be? I want you to start writing those down. Become clear on them. And it doesn't necessarily, maybe you, you don't like the job and the circumstance you're in. And maybe there's not anything that you do really particularly or love and are passionate about as far as a career and you see yourself doing that thing for a living. But I, there are things that you like and that you love and that you would rather be doing than what you're doing at work. I want you to write those things down because those will be a representation of what ultimately we're going to work towards. And I promise me, I, I, I promise you on this, as you do that, the thing that will allow you to live that type of life will show up. The thing that will allow you to exemplify those wants and those desires as you focus on them, the thing that will create the living and the environment and the career for you, it will show up and it will be a perfect match with your purpose and your passion. So many people go from cradle to grave not living the law of non-resistance, not becoming clear with their ideals and, and replacing the things they don't want with these ideals that they've fallen in love with and the things they want to do and entertaining those thoughts. Just know that people don't do that. Typically, people don't do that, and so they go from cradle to grave with an unfulfilled life, un, you know, uh, no purpose, no great accomplishments. But if you'll do it and you'll write down those ideas, you don't have to know how you're going to accomplish them. Those are just going to be the things you're going to think about. You're going to meditate on them. You're going to consciously think about them. You're going to talk about them, and you're going to make them like start to become real in your life through thinking and through conversation. So write down the ideas of how you're, like, if you want to go golf. I remember when I did my first dream book, I had golf clubs. I took a picture of me. I had somebody take a picture of me holding golf clubs and walking out the door and looking back and saying, you know, bye, I'm off to play golf. And in my mind, it was like during the middle of the week while people are working. I just, I didn't know how I was going to accomplish that. I just knew that that would be cool. Like, it would give me freedom. If I wanted to go golf, I could go golf. Guess what? I go golfing in the middle of the week while everybody's working all the time now. But it didn't start. I didn't know what the catalyst was going to be or the vehicle to allow me. That showed up in my life, and I did other things around that. I took a picture of me standing behind a lectern, and and I was like teaching from that lectern, and I was holding my hand up in the air, and I had never done that before. Now I do it all the time. I didn't know what was going to be the vehicle to allow me to do that. I just knew that that was something I wanted to do. That was a way I wanted to contribute. Well, guess what? It has become a way that I get to make my living now. And I didn't see how that was possible back when I put those things in my dream book, picture and statements around them. So what are the things that you love to do? What are your, your ideals that you've fallen in love with? Get those down on a piece of paper. Now that you've cleared away the law of non-resistance, all that negative talk, and you have a lot of time to think about these things. And that's what you've got to do. You have to do that. It's just part of doing things in a certain way. That's the scientific method that produces, that creates, that manifests. It's part of doing that thing scientifically. It's a scientific process. And now you have the option of whether you're going to do that or not. Only 5% will do it. Now, I would like to think that we're a lot higher on that percentage on this call because you guys are on purpose and you're proactively going after it. Now, you think about everybody out there that you know and people you see uh, driving on the freeways and on their way to work that are not doing this. But we're going to change that. We're going to make this more and more uh, available to people. But you've got to do it. Only like 5% will do it. I'd like to think of that. 100% of you guys will do it. That's the scientific method. Again, you know, I talked a little bit about the law of non-resistance right here. Uh, but we're kind of putting the cart in front of the horse as to what laws we're enacting. The law of attraction, the law of vibration, the law of focus. I mean, all of these different things that, are, that make up and symbiotically create that dream life. But uh, I, I, I was private messaged by somebody who is not doing what they want to do in their life. I said, just hang in there, get on the calls, and st this stuff will start coming together. So to that particular person that private messaged me, I want to say this is key. 
you got to put down the ideals and again you already know what you love doing so just write them down become clear and then share that with people articulate it because while it's in your head it's not real clear it's not real definitive you've got to become clear on it and writing it down helps you to become clear on the things that you want to start incorporating into your life okay so i went a little longer on that than i was expecting to but hopefully that makes sense i I think it does so another part another thing i outlined was have faith that the system will work for you many people the little note that i wrote down next to that was many people do not utilize the opportunity to test something when it's introduced to them they rather they judge it with their limited understanding We are so limited in our understanding. So I just presented something to you. Now you're going to judge that whether you think that's worthy of your time or not. So again, I'm going to read. So he said in in the bullet point, have faith that the system will work for you. And I wrote, many people do not utilize the opportunity to test something out and see if it produces a good result. Rather, they judge with their limited understanding the thing to be wrong or of no worth to them. And they do that to their detriment. We don't know hardly anything, you guys, and and we're just, you know, I feel like I put in a lot of hours, a lot of years of work into this, and I feel like I know something about it. Thomas Edison said people are off doing all kinds of things that are unrelated throughout the day. I focus on one thing. My life's amount, uh, my life's work is, you know, got to amount to something because he focuses on that one thing, and that's what I've been doing with this for nearly a decade. So I'm laying it out for you. I, these are not the laws of the universe and and that God has put in place according to Dave this is how this is information that I've been given and that I've worked very hard to understand they're irrefutable the irrefutable laws of success so why not try it out and see if the thing does produce good results here's what uh, I have in my iBooks let me go into the library here it's uh, great lives and one thing that will Woodrow Wilson said, who was, you know, I'm not a great historian. I didn't do well in high school. Um, I believe he was a president of the United States, Woodrow Wilson. Don't judge me on that, people, for you history buffs. So Woodrow Wilson said this, though. The common characteristic of people is their ability to resist instruction. A great man, a very successful person, writes out in detail those directions which exactly mark the path of success. And then here's the catch. And then we insist on maintaining our own mediocrity by disregarding the instructions. So somebody lays out the instructions on how to reach success. And and I'm going to say in this instance, in a scientific way. Um, And then we as human beings disregard the instruction. We maintain our mediocrity by saying, no, I don't don't think that's right. I'm not gonna do that. I don't believe that. With my limited understanding, what I do know is that I don't think that's gonna work. And I'm telling you, (laughs) there's no way you could convince me otherwise. I don't care who you put me in front of. I have done this so many times now and taken my life and accomplished my goals and my dreams. Where previous to that, I had never accomplished my goals and my dreams. I was never living a fulfilled life, you know, to the level that I was capable and that I wanted to. Not even close. In fact, I came to a place, if you remember my story, where I wanted to die. I didn't even want to go on living because I was so far away from that. Um, So, moving on. Another part of this bullet point, after further study and practice, your goals and dreams will appear more real to you than ever before. And the little note that I made for that was life is more of a moldable plastic that reacts to any desire you have. When you discover the process and utilize it to its fullest, you will have discovered your birthright. Because what I mean by birthright is that thing that is inherently innate within you because of who you are as a child of God. And when you learn the laws that dis, that that govern us and everything around us, and you start to realize that you can comply with those laws through your attitude, through your actions, through your thoughts, through the way you speak, the way you articulate, the way you allow things to influence you in conversations and circumstances, you're... you're you're presenting yourself in a certain way 
And when you find that you can do that and comply to law, it works every single time. It's infallible. The laws are infallible. There's no way that they don't work perfectly every time. It's us. It's us that needs to progress and get to the point where we understand. So I, you know, the whole, if I was to take this whole call and wrap it up and say, here, here's what I want you to get out of it. It's that life has put you into circumstances and situations. Maybe agreeable, maybe not agreeable. If agreeable, maybe not on the level that you want it to be. And maybe you're so far away from that, you don't want to live anymore like I was. What I want you to get from this call is, for first, number one, I want you to make sure that you get your mastermind group put together. So I'm going to give you a little call to action. The call to action is make sure you get your mastermind group together and that you're talking about and you're sharing and you're able to articulate and, and bounce things off of each other and get input and get data that you would have never gotten if you analyzed this all on your own. And then um, to the circumstances and the situations that you're in, they look like they control you right now. What I want you to do is I want you to shift that. I want you to use the law of non-resistance and I want you to use the law of excellence. So the law of non-resistance is don't talk about, don't speak about, don't give in to, don't contribute to the things that you don't want, whether that's at work, whether it's at home in your relationships, whether it's the car you drive, whether it's the house you live in, the neighborhood you're in, whether it's your income bracket, whether it's the bank that you go to and, and you don't have enough money in that bank, whatever it is, start with your thoughts, be that change that you want to see in the world. So this is where it starts. And then obviously, if you're not thinking about it, we definitely don't want to be talking about it. As a mastermind group, I want you guys to play at 100%. I want you to have an agreement amongst each other. So in your mastermind group, write out an agreement that everybody's going to sign off to that you're going to be teachable, that you're going to play at 100%, that you're in it to win it. You're in it to reach excellence. You're in it to reach as far as you can go. You guys will create relationships for the rest of your life. And so when you're in your mastermind groups, watch how people are talking and, and get permission to say, do I have permission to share with you or to coach you in this moment? Because you just said something that wasn't in agreement with the law of non-resistance. And can I share that with you? Get their permission. And everybody should be playing at 100%. And so when I did this, I was being corrected constantly. But I wanted to move forward, so I wanted to be corrected. It was frustrating. I'd be like, dang it. And then all of a sudden it was like, I, I, I'm competitive. And so I was being competitive with myself and trying to get them to not have to correct me anymore. So like if I could say sentences and paragraphs without being corrected, because in the beginning I was being corrected all the time. They're like, Dave, let us share with you how you just said that. This is how you maybe might think about saying it. It was happening constantly. And I was like, yes, I'm going to score a touchdown. I know I'm going to make, I'm going to hit the home run. I'm going to get through a conversation with these guys without saying something in a, in a way that uh, is negative or contradicting to what I want. And, 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 and it was becoming aware to me that it was so habitual, I wasn't even realizing I was saying it. And so in your mastermind group, you can help people to become aware of something they're not aware that they're doing. They may agree in the moment, yeah, I love the law of non-resistance. I'm totally going to live that. And then they go and habitually start violating the law of non-resistance, and they don't even know they're doing it. So you guys need to play at 100%. You need to come to an agreement that you're going to help each other. And you're going to know what these agreements are up front. You're going to play at 100%. So do that as a mastermind group, and then also... Bring your ideas. Now, one other thing I want you to do in your mastermind group from this call is you're going to clear a lot of free space for, for yourselves when you stop talking about the things you don't want and you stop thinking about them. So you're clearing some free space. It's blank. It's a blank canvas. You've got to put something there or you won't make the change. You won't finish it off. And so it's like a vacuum. You created this vacuum hole. It's going to get filled in with something. I want you to fill it in with your ideas and your ideals for life that you've fallen in love with. So if it is golfing in the middle of the week, if it's serving people and helping them to reach you know, a greater level in life, if it's gardening, if it's painting, if it's reading, if it's going back to school and being a professional student, if it's teaching, if it's knitting, whatever it is, uh, I want you to write those ideals down. They don't have to be what you're going to do for your living. It doesn't have to be a goal like... I'm going to reach this goal and then I'll be able to live that. I just want you to become familiar with them and articulate them and write them down. And I want you to share those as a group.
and share them on whatever level you want. If you want to share about them in a profound way as to why or why you're in love with it or what you think it's going to accomplish, what the long-term vision is, or it's just, you know what, I just really want to golf. I want the freedom to where I can go golfing whenever I want. I don't want you to think about how that's going to happen. When I put down those pictures in my dream book and the, in the paragraphs that I wrote with them, I didn't even think about how it's going to happen because I didn't know what that was. Okay, I let the laws work that out. And guess what? It matched me up with something that is so perfect. It's just an extension of who I am now. I don't work anymore. Yeah, I get paid to do something, but it's not work to me. It was a perfect match. And the way that God has set up the universe, I'm going to say the universe perfectly matched me up with that thing. Even more so than my dreams could have ever imagined. Because I stayed focused. I, I cleared the plate. I created a habitual pattern of thinking about those things that I wanted. And uh, they showed up. So I think that's really clear. I think that's something that you guys can grab a hold of off of today's call. So that's my call to action to you is get those down and then start putting little sticky notes everywhere when you open the cupboard, when you open the refrigerator, on the mirror, in your car, by the speedometer, you know, uh, uh, below your monitor at work or your place where you work. If it's a toolbox, you know, put it on your toolbox and start to think about those things and what it would be like in that moment to be doing those things. Not as a wish, but actually put yourself in first in, in, in the experience of what those things are. Like you're dreaming. Like when we were kids in elementary school, we would daydream. I would daydream and the teacher would say, David, pay attention to me. Quit daydreaming. Well, I want you to start daydreaming again. You still got to make sure that you're aware of what you're doing and don't put yourself in any danger by, you know, mentally going off. But um, any free time, any spare time, and any time that you can do that, I want you to do that. And it can happen. So in three and a half months, it changed my life. I was in a whole different environment. In three and a half months, because I played at 100%, no messing around, I put it to the test. Now I have a testimony, and I've done it again and again and again. So I know I've gone over, and uh, uh, I think it was worth it. So with that, I just want to uh, thank David Wood from The Kick-Ass Life for partner me up, putting me under the umbrella of the Kick-Ass Life uh, podcast and that program. And the Kick-Ass Life, if you go to thekickasslife.com and you can, uh, if you're not already aware of David Wood, he's an incredible mentor and trainer and he brings on guests and he gives you a whole other perspective of how to obtain that Kick-Ass Life and what it's like so that you can start to see the example and start to be able to think about that and process it because you have an example being laid out to you. And uh, so I highly recommend you. His shows are on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mine are on Monday and Fridays. And then I want to thank uh, Mr. O'Neill, Michael O'Neill as well, for uh, making sure that everything gets connected to you guys and his expertise in that. So with that, you guys, we'll see you on Friday. And thank you for checking in. And one other thing I want to say is can you please help us to get this show out there? My goal is to make a huge impact, not a tiny one, but a huge impact. I want to have millions of likes. And so if you'll invite the people you're bringing in and, and invite them to the show, have them download it, have them go to facebook.com forward slash mechanic two millionaire, and it's the number two. So facebook.com forward slash mechanic, the number two millionaire, mechanic to millionaire. And like, uh, like it. Go on there and, and you have to go to that specific place to, and like it. And that will allow us to have a greater reach on Facebook so that we can touch more people's lives and make a bigger impact. And I need you to be able to do that so you can contribute to my dream and what I want to accomplish by taking the time that it takes to do that and invite other people to do it as well and share the show, all right? I would truly, truly appreciate that because my goal is to have millions of likes uh, instead of like 1,500 or 2,000. I want to really think large here and, and make a big impact and I need your help to be able to do that so I would appreciate it and also you can go to mechanic to millionaire.com and become familiar with the website there and, and get the podcast and, and have them download it with that you guys thank you so much we'll see you on Friday have a great day thank you for listening to another edition of the mechanic to millionaire podcast download this and other episodes at mechanic to millionaire.com